life of people with Parkinson's. In 2005, not long after her son was diagnosed with autism, the Holly Rod Foundation expanded its mission to provide support and resources to those affected by autism. She has become a tireless advocate for education, outreach, and support for both Parkinson's and autism. And in 2010, Holly released an NAACP Image Award winning children's book about autism, co authored by her daughter, Elizabeth Pete, entitled My Brother Charlie. I definitely I want to hear more about that because I know how important that is. The book has helped countless children understand what it's like to have a sibling with autism. Tonight, she will share her journey with her uh, father's Parkinson's, her son's autism, and her life as a busy mother activist and actress, and we're all delighted to welcome her to our program this evening. Thank you very much for being here. Please join me in a warm Atlanta welcome for Holly Robinson. Well, thank you so much uh, for, for inviting me here, and especially I want to thank Fred for that great, beautiful introduction, but Sandra and Laura, thank you, and thank you to everybody at the Foundation for Mitochondria Medicine, because I do about 12 of these a year, and um, I have to say selfishly, I pick and choose one where I feel I can learn. And this is one that made so much sense, having a father who had Parkinson's and a son with autism, and so the connection was really pretty organic, so thank you so much for that. I'm happy to be here in Atlanta, a city that I absolutely love, almost moved here a few years ago. <laughs> this close. Nobody, and I mean nobody's going to advocate for your child better than you. And you know that, all the IEP meetings. But people say, well, why did you do so well in Donald Trump's boardroom? I said, because I've been to IEP meetings. I'm like, please. I'm not scared of that guy. I said, from the school board. Um, <laughs> there are so many things that we have to be aware of, whether it's a special needs trust, you know, just really just getting everything lined up for this child um, in the future. And now he's 15. Now we're experiencing adolescence. And we know that neurotypical adolescence is difficult, but adolescence, when you have a kid on the spectrum, is especially tough. And so that's where we are right now, and we have hurdles. We definitely have hurdles. So it's a family affair. That's our, our Motley crew. we got to we got a big, a big group of the starting five, plus an extra backup. Um, and we've been blessed to have kids and, uh, who really are connected with what their brother's going through. And we are so happy that they're advocates for him because, as you know, every mother of a child, whether it's mitochondrial, autism, cerebral palsy, you always fear, oh my gosh, when I'm gone, what's going to happen? And you want it build a team around your child, and even if you don't have a bunch of kids like us, whether it's aunts, uncles, cousins, you want to build that team up. Ryan came up with the idea of this Autism 101. She wanted to go to school and have a conversation because she said the kids didn't understand what autism was. So they said, she said, okay, listen, you and dad go in and have this conversation. And, you know, my husband's played, you know, football in front of millions, and, you know, I've you know, been in front of crowds like this and, and bigger, but nothing was scarier than talking to 50 fourth graders. That was so scary, and my palms sweat just thinking about it. But because you know, they're like, what? What are you going to tell us? They know everything. So Ryan gave us, Ryan gave us these bullet points to just smooth it out a little bit. At first, she, of course, she said, never say anything embarrassing. Level the playing field, because uh, the idea is that um, the children at school didn't understand what autism was. And if you sort of say, okay, what is it you guys do well and what are you not very good at? And some kids say, oh, I'm really good at baseball, but I suck at math. I'm really good at um, science, but I'm terrible at hockey. Uh, and we said, well, Rodney is so good uh, at memorizing things. He's amazing. He can tell you every president from 1 to 44, the vice president, what year they went to off and went in office. You name it. He can tell you every player on the MLB, NBA, NFL, even the hockey players with those crazy Russian names, he can tell you all these, but, but he has a hard time making friends. And it was like watching this fog lift when, when they um, heard that. So sometimes just leveling the playing field helps. Give, tell them about patience, sense of humor, and um, 
you know, sometimes I find it interesting that the parents were, it was harder to explain to the parents about autism than it was to the kids. It was a very touching and heartwarming evening, but more than that, it was informative for me. I learned so much, and I want to take the information I have and just spread it out as far as I can. Thank you very much for your stories, oh, also, you. because Hi. they do help a lot of people. Oh, well, I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. That's why I come to share the stories that I, my journey, and for whatever, however it, help, it helps other people. We are live with Dr. Martha Herbert of the book, The Autism Revolution. Let us know tonight about uh, the autism revolution. Let us know about your feelings on autism and, um, and how we can help promote and prevent the disease, if possible. Right. Well, as I say I, in my book, I actually answer your questions very in a comprehensive way, I think that autism is something that develops. It's not hardwired, stamped into you. And there's a lot of points where you can make things better. You can improve food. You can make the nutrient density of the food really high so that the body and the brain get all the support they could possibly need. A person with autism is having a hard time, and they need all the help that they can get. And also, avoiding toxins is extremely important because toxins make your cells and your mitochondria have a really hard time. So why give them a harder time than they're already having? Mind your infections and keep your gut microbes healthy. Use cultured vegetables and yogurt and things that really help the gut stay healthy. And, and, and keep the stress low because people with autism can't handle as much in, input get lots of exercise and help a person with autism feel where their body is in space, learn better coordination skills. You could really get a lot doing all of that and it's common sense, low risk, everyday choices that you can make that can really help your loved one or yourself with autism. Is it more prevalent in males or females, or does it... Four, to, four or five to one males wow. compared to females. Okay. And then how does a child with autism grow up as an adult that you've seen? Well, it can be very... It depends on what a child with autism gets to learn and experience. If you learn how to handle a lot of different situations, getting simple jobs, getting things that you can do, you develop capabilities of handling different situations. We need to have more opportunities like that for younger people so that when they get to be adults, they have a little bit more ability to handle, or maybe even a lot more ability, to handle different things and make their way. Temple Grandin has a fantastic way of explaining this, and I recommend that people look her up online and hear about what she says.